in your conversation. And there's obviously some gender differences when it comes to communication. We all know this, right? In fact, let me ask the women here. Women, what is the number one goal that men have in conversation? I just want the women to answer. What's the number one goal that men have in conversation? Get to the point, solve problems I'm hearing, right? Keep it short. Okay. I... Yeah, it's what <laughs> researchers actually call report talk. In other words, yeah. men like the report. We like to be in the know. It's just that we don't need all the fluff and we don't need all the bunny trails and yeah. just kind of give me the report, right? We come home at the end of the day and what do we do? We want to know certain things. What's for dinner, right? <laughs> Did you get the mail, right? Anything for me, right? Do I need to make any calls? How are the kids? What are... Give me the report. Give me the information I need to function in this home tonight, right? I want the report. Um, and so we're kind of about the bottom line in some respects. Absolutely. And it's not the case for women. In fact, let me ask the men in this room. Men, what is it that you think women want in a good conversation? What do you guys think? <laughs> Details, stories over and over. Well, you guys are on to something because we do like all the fluff and the bunny trails because the conversation is not about a report. It's all about building rapport. We want to build the relationship. Every conversation is just an excuse to feel connected to the person you're talking to. It's not about the information you're exchanging. It's just to open a window of connection. And so we like to hang out and talk and mull over details because we have more time to feel connected after it. It's all about building that rapport. In fact, when women talk, you know, we do everything with our body language we can to say we're connected. I mean, we'll kind of lean in and sometimes even hold hands. And, hey, you don't see a lot know. of guys doing that. Yeah. No, not a lot of guys. You know, but everything about us, our eyes, our bodies, our words. I mean, we're not talking about what we did yesterday. We're talking about, you know, 30 sec. give us 30 seconds and we're into our deepest fear, you know, our yeah. darkest or whatever it is. Because we want to be connected. And that, and that takes revealing your heart and listening and all that kind of stuff. So for women, it's all about this rapport. And I love this kind of conversation. I'm always looking for ways to get less to fully sort of get it about what it is I'm wanting when I say, let's talk. You know, we're sitting there eating dinner, and I'm sitting there noticing that it's really quiet. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't want to talk. And I just want to eat. <laughs> and I could see Courtney just kind of looking at me. And, and kind of, I was kind of thinking, huh, I wonder if she expects me to, like, talk a lot right now. <laughs> And really, I was even thinking, I was like, yeah, I was like, guys don't, they don't like to talk as much as women. And, and then I wound up about two hours later, and she's like, yeah, I noticed that. And, and I was like, well, what were you thinking? And she was like, what did you say? I thought I did something wrong. Yeah, and you didn't do anything wrong. So for women, it's all about this report. And the other night, um, I was talking to our, our little boy, John, in the bed. Now, he's in first grade, so he's reading to me at night, which is kind of a fun reversal. And, you know, he works hard at it. It takes a long time. And he's reading in this little Winnie the Pooh book that he used to love me to read to him. So as he's reading it, it just hit me like it was the first time. That is unbelievable. And, you know, he doesn't know why I'm getting so excited about Winnie the Pooh, but I am. And so I kiss him goodnight, and I grab the book, and I run downstairs and burst into the study where Les is working, the kids are asleep, and I listen to this unbelievable thing. I just read about women and communication. He's like, really, what's it from? Is it going to be helpful? And I said, well, it's from the Winnie the Pooh book John just read to me. He's like, okay. And I said, no, 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 it's Piglet and Pooh, and they're talking. And That's where I really got interested. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and Piglet says, Pooh, and Pooh says, what, Piglet? And he says, oh, nothing. I just wanted to be sure of you. Oh, come on. <laughs> I guarantee you no guy just went, oh. I don't get it. I guarantee you no other guy in here gets Any guy in here go, oh, yes, that's, I resonate with that. I understand that, right? I just didn't get it. And I can remember Leslie was so crestfallen was because she said that. And it was she just thought, like, the clouds were going to part. I was yes. going to understand women finally. And it was just like, yeah, just to be sure of you. And I don't know what I said. but I You said whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't get it, and uh, I remember I'm disappointed. In fact, I remember the next the next weekend we were at our church, and since we travel a fair bit, always fun to see our friends at church. And I was in the church foyer, and I saw my buddy Merle. He's a detective, and uh, I saw him, and I said, "Man, Merle, what's going on with you? I haven't seen you forever." He goes, "Oh, I've been so busy." I said, "Like, what have you been doing?" He got out his little day timer, and he starts going through. He goes, "Oh, I had this meeting with these people, and I'm going to meet with the the mayor on this thing. We're going to start this Crime Stoppers thing." He's going through all this stuff, and he says, "What's up with you?" I got out my little Palm Pilot, and I said, well, I got this lecture to give, and I'm going to travel down here, and I got this book to write, and this other thing's happen. And we both closed the books, slapped each other on the back, walked away. <laughs> now, Leslie happened to see this conversation, and she and I fell in step. We're walking to our car in the church parking lot, and I said to Leslie, 
man, it was good to see Merle. And she said, well, technically, I'm not sure you actually did see Merle. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? Go up to him and say, Merle? And he'd say, yes, Les. And I'd say, oh, nothing. Just want to be sure of you. Right? We actually have a friendship. Yeah, right. He'd slap me across the chops if I said that to him, right? But there's, there's, there's differences yeah. between men and women. This idea of building rapport versus report talk exactly. can cause some kind of tension between us. Absolutely. And so we need some skills to kind of cross that divide. Right. You know? Absolutely. And so the first of these skills is really simple. And this is so simple, in fact, that uh, I sometimes liken it to the advice that Vince Lombardi gave his football team when they weren't doing so well. Do you remember this at halftime? And he would come in and he would hold up a football. Anybody know what he'd say to his team? Men, this is a football. Well, no duh, right? He's, he just kind of going back to the fundamentals of the game. And uh, in a very real sense, that's kind of what we're saying right. here, too, is this is communication, right? And by the way, I asked Vince Lombardi Jr., the son of this famous coach, he lives in Seattle, and I asked him, he's an attorney, I said, is that really true that your dad used to hold up that football and say, men, this is a football? He says, oh, yeah. He said, I remember being a kid in the locker room once when dad did that. And I uh, said, men, this is a football. And he said, one of the linebackers in the back row said, slow down, coach, slow down. So I don't want me to move too fast for you here, but this is communication. Skill number one, clarify content. I know that's so basic. It's so fundamental. You want to say no, duh. Just go ahead and say it. No, duh. Right? But this skill of clarifying content is so important. It's really essential. I mean, it, it is so easy to misunderstand what someone's We saying. jump to conclusions Absolutely. all the time. The other day we had we had to go out, we were giving them talk, and so as we were leaving the house, um, you know, all of a sudden we were running late, and I pulled on an outfit that I'd never worn before, and I ran downstairs, we were gathering up our resources, and I stood in front of the desk, and I said, so what do you think, how do I look? And Les kind of was all distracted, and he looked up, and he said, fine with me. So what do you guys think I did? Yeah, went right upstairs and thought, well, I can't wear this. And I went up to change, and now you're standing down there hollering at me to get down here. And so I come down, and my young he's like, what's wrong with you? Why are we so late, and why did you change clothes? And I said, well, it's clear to me you didn't like my outfit. And uh, I said it was fine with me. I mean, yeah, it was fine. Yeah, exactly. What I heard was, you know, hey, it's your reputation. If you want to go out in public like that, <laughs> that's my guess. But, you know, that's not what you meant. I definitely heard that. And that stuff happens all the time. Yeah, we read messages that aren't necessarily yeah. there. And that's why we need to clarify content. When Courtney says, hmm, that's interesting, it makes me think that she doesn't have a clear definition as to really what I'm saying, and she's, like, wanting more clarification. Hmm, that's interesting means, um, I think you have misunderstood me. Do you know that for the words that we use... In the English language, there are on average 3.5 different meanings per word. Mm. I mean, there's lots of room for misunderstanding, for misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's why we jump to conclusions all the time, because we're not yeah. clarifying content. Now, just to kind of underscore this point, I want to put something up here on the screen. And it's a little phrase for you to kind of uh, decipher. There's no right or wrong way, just to decipher this thing. I'll put it up there, and there it is. You can see that phrase. And just read that in your own mind, decipher that. On the count of three, let's read it out loud. Ready? One, two, three. Love, love is now here. And how many said love is now here? And how many said love is nowhere? <laughs> All right? So there's the optimist and the pessimist today, right? And I, I know there's always a couple of freaks in the group that say, love, I snow here. So <laughs> you know who you are, right? <laughs> We need to clarify content. Goofy illustration, but it makes the point we really do need to clarify because we see it all from our, our different angles. Exactly. Right? You know, the number one complaint that couples bring to a marriage therapist is we just don't communicate. Well, that doesn't have to be the case. No, in fact, these questions and exercises can really open up the heart of your communication together, and we hope you'll explore them. Well, I think that last one, trying to figure out, you know, what it was actually saying is, is, is so true. And I think, I just think it proves a point. Um, we all have perceptions. Now, I believe that our last week's lesson really is so important in understanding, developing that habit of happiness. 
and, and, and how do we typically perceive things? How do we typically look at things? You know, do, you, do we find ourselves typically, when we misunderstand each other, do we primarily see it negatively or positively? Or neutral? I'm going to throw neutral in there because sometimes we don't understand. And there's not a negative or a positive bit. You know, I'm, I'm neutral because, because I really don't understand. But if when we don't understand, we perceive predominantly he or she means this, and he or she means something negative, then one of the things it says is, is a possible indication is that we possibly see things from a negative bent maybe more so than we should. That's why I threw in that, that, that neutral part, because sometimes you don't understand, um, and you, 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 your mind may wants to go negative, but you believe the best of each other. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter, ter uh, uh, chapter 13, one of the verses says, uh, in the Amplified Version, love believes the best of every person. So I choose to believe that what he or she is saying, even though I don't understand, that they don't mean it that it's negative. Um... I don't know if my, uh, I've used this example. I haven't used it in a while. Um, we were, uh, I did a wedding at uh, Cal State Long Beach. Um, and they have a beautiful uh, place where they do weddings called the Japanese Garden. So the walls, this place is probably, let's say, 15,000 square feet, maybe even 25,000 square feet. And the walls are as tall as these walls. And you open these gates, and it's like you're in Japan. And so uh, I probably go to 99, I, no, I go to 95% of all rehearsals. I just like to know what's going on. I like to know, you know, um, you know, I already know what my role is, but I like to know if there's going to be additional songs or if they want a unity candle or if they want a sand ceremony, you know, when things are going to come in. Sometimes I, you know, I've, a few times I haven't gone and I get there and find out they want to do communion. You know, and so I just like to incorporate, I just like to know what's going on. So that Thursday I went to the rehearsal. Drove from here to Long Beach State. Come back. Saturday is the wedding. Go to the wedding. Come back. I didn't stay at the reception because we had planned to go out with some friends. And so, you know, I'm a little tired. It was a busy week. And driving out there and back, that's, that's four to two times round trip. So just a little tired. And so um, um, I got home and my wife said, um, you, you, you still want to go out? Now, now, now look, look at me. She said, you still want to go out? Yeah. And she said, why did you say it like that? I said, like what? <laughs> yeah, I want to go out. Remember I said 55% of communication is nonverbal. Here's some times where we're not honest with ourselves about this thing called communication. Is, is how we're feeling at the time sometimes we ask a question. And so um, I said, yeah. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to just change and, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get ready. So then she came into the bedroom and said, because I had, we were doing some uh, remodeling in the home and I had laid this about 750 square feet of tile, but I hadn't grounded it yet. And so she brought in her broom. And she said, babe, why didn't you do my broom like this? I said, like what, babe? Remember? And I, she said, like this. Now, the broom looked like maybe seven semis had ran over. <laughs> now, I, keep in mind, I'm, I'm getting ready to give an example of believing the best. 
in choosing not to interpret a response in a negative way, because then it could always be negative outcome. So I said, babe, I did not. She said, you did, you did, you did do this broom like this. I said, babe, look at the broom. I couldn't have done it like that. So even Leslie said, mom, dad could have, and she said, be quiet. He did use to do this broom like this. You're talking about when, the, when all the, the bristles went the, like All that. the bristles went like that. Well, it wasn't like that before you used oh, it. Oh, boy. <laughs> And so now... Did you use the room to get in between the... End of yes, but babe, I did not do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, 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 see, here's what happens when we're communicating and stuff. Now, keep in mind, I just described to you my week. I just described to you me going back and forth to Long Beach State two times in a row. I did say I still want to go out. I didn't stay at the reception. I want to go out. And I know I did not do that broom the way that broom got like that. <laughs> now, I'm starting to, you know, on the inside, how we get on the inside, and some of us say, say something else. <laughs> Just say one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> So now I'm just starting to, okay, now this time I know I'm right. You know how when you know you're right on the inside? <laughs> you get indignant. So I said, okay. So I calmed myself down. And um, we went out and we got to the corner and she said, you know, I'm sorry. I... Now believing the best of each other so I've learned, now this is a learned behavior. I'm sharing this because one day you will be on some kind of street like this. And how you proceed it, your response, because even in the best of classes, even in the best of books, even in the best of scenarios, sometimes it goes awry. And so you are going to have to choose how you're going to respond. So I could have said, you know, and just, just because of my personality type, I don't blow up, but I could have said, you know what, I'm tired. I don't feel like going out. I'm just tired. I've been driving, and I could have made every excuse in the book, and that's, that's my way of maybe kind of blowing up. But we went out, had a good time, and, and and I think we it, I I, I could have messed up. We made love that night, well, so I could have that I could have messed all that up over. Broom, broom. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm just being real. So a part of it, I don't care what we go over, what we cover. Here's where I don't think we've been honest enough, sometimes in our classes, sometimes in the books. I still have a responsibility. And you can't always take the easy way out. It's easy to take the easy way out. It doesn't require no responsibility. It doesn't require nobody to take the high road. And be careful when it always feels good to, to, to blow off. Sometimes it does, but, but, but when you like to do it all the time, be careful. You're setting yourself up to fail. If this was our family room, this would be a big family room. You just kind of count the seats in here. This is, this is a Super Bowl party, inviting everybody over. And, and, and you, you prospective husband and wives, this is your family room. Ladies, would you do anything different if you were going to have people over in this room? No way in the world. Some of you wouldn't have nobody over in your room. 
this was your family room like this, would you? <laughs> Guys, it's it's the Super Bowl. It's 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 the two 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 of the best teams. How important is it that this is working for us guys? <laughs> the most important. That's the most important. <laughs> that we want to say that the, that that the speakers is the sense around. This this is real important because this is what we're inviting everybody over. It's a Super Bowl party. Not a enjoy my family room party. <laughs> now, one of our lessons that's coming up in the, the next couple of weeks is 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 uh, is is understanding. I, I forget how it's worded, but 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 understanding the gender gap. We are different, and the quicker we can accept that, then the quicker we can make some subtle adjustments with, with our differences so that we can coexist and be happy. Yeah, we might, we might, the fellas, we might rearrange it a little bit. We might take some things out that are here. But you know, the fella's not going to come, you know, the fella's not going to leave and go to work and say, man, why the kitty got all that stuff all over the place? Other than, man, that's a good Super Bowl. That's a good game. And the ladies may figure, how could you have a, how could you enjoy the game with, with those tables over there? <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us are wrong, but we, we process information differently. The ladies, typically, you would take a lot of things out. You, you might even rearrange the chairs a different way because you're relational. You're just wondering, how can people interact? How, that's not neat. That's, we came over for the Super Bowl. I'm not looking at that chair. I don't care where you got that chair from. Bro, does the TV work? <laughs> Man, why you got a 27 inch? Why you got a 19 inch? You got all these people over here. Now, we might say something like that. Why you got a 19 inch, bro? All these people over here. You say, hey, hey, Kenny, are, are we, we going to watch you someplace else? <laughs> you, you got another room you ain't told nobody about? Oh, man, that's cool, man. We might say something about that, but not about the chairs. And, and different doesn't mean wrong. And so, ladies, that's how these, that's how we typically will process. Typically. I use that because there are some ladies and men that are different. And different doesn't mean wrong. And so for us guys, we're communicating to them if we didn't make no adjustments that we don't care how nothing looks. And so I think for us, we have to make some adjustments. We have to, we have, we have to clean up a little. And then ladies, you have to Understand why you won that 55 inch before the Super Bowl? Right. Because <laughs> that's when that's the major. That's when they sell the most TVs. Is right before Super Bowl. And when they go on sale too. Mm -hmm. I can find a reason for a 55. It could be off season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kind of giving some examples. And then maybe, ladies, for you, okay, babe, I did. You know, I, I agree. Let's make the family room nice. Babe, why, why do I got to clean the garage out, too? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, because you know, ladies, sometimes you want 
the whole house clean like if the President of the United States is coming over. <laughs> and guys, we're, we're, and, and ladies, we're just different, not wrong. Different, but not wrong. I, I just I hope you guys are trying to under, understand what he, see, the, one thing I learned about him, our, our communication styles are very different. He's, he kind of communicates more like a female where he will go all around the band and talk and, you know, and I'm just kind of like, get to the bottom line. I'm more bottom line. You know, I don't need all that. But so he said all of that to say <laughs> um, that, uh, that we're different and that we have to understand that we're different. And it's okay that we're different. I know for women, and I can speak because I am a woman, a lot of times we, I think, more so than uh, men, uh, we we want them to be like us, more like us, because the way we do everything is good and it's right. Mm -hmm. right. Like we got the best ideas, <laughs> yeah, right? Right. right. We do. Right. We feel like every, you know, our ideas are the best. The, my way is the best. Right. You know, but <laughs> in marriage, you have to allow your mate to be himself. You know, not not. I'm not talking about any wrongdoing. I'm just saying, you know, he used this the Super Bowl uh, <coughs> example because we had that example one time where I was just concerned about, you know, oh, I want to get new plants, so oh, I want to, you know, make sure the 